la WhatsApp o la WhatsApp? Dear members, uh, it, is our uh, it is our pleasure to have Professor Chen with us for this uh, International Research Convention, IRC 2024, at our university, Sir Padabas Singhanya University. Uh, on the behalf of Directorate of Research and Publications, Sir Padampas Singhanya University, we feel honored to welcome you, Professor Chin, for this IRC 2024. It is our honor to introduce uh, the Professor Chin. Uh, very good morning, Professor. I am Dr. Prithvi. Prithvi, thank you. Yeah, it's a really pleasure. Yeah, it's really pleasure to meet you. Thank you, Professor. Yes. Oh, my pleasure. Yeah. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Professor uh, Chin received the MS degree in the electrical engineering from the National Taiwan University in 1991 and the PhD degree in computer science and engineering from the National Sun Yat Sen University, Taiwan in 2009. In August 1991, he joined the faculty of the Department of Electronic Engineering, National. Kisang University of Science and Technology, Taiwan, where the currently serve as the full professor. His research interests include the computer networking, embedded system, computational intelligence, and information security. He has more than 300 academic publications, actively serve as the editor, guest editor, committee member, reviewer of various journal conferences and institutes. It's really a privilege for us to have Professor Sin with us. Please, sir. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I would like to say thank you to the faculty member, including you two gentlemen and Professor Chagra Party's invitation. I am honored and privileged to be to be here to be part of this event. Okay, I'm giving uh, with half an hour. I would like to sell with everyone some very exciting and interesting finding of our recent study. Okay, please allow me to take the control of the screen. Okay, I believe that uh, all of you may have my screen. Okay. Now I, I would like to uh, commence my presentation. Okay. <clears throat> The, the, the title for my showing is the detection of unknown DDoS. DDoS attack with deep learning. It is a very exciting and I believe it should be a uh, useful and quite promising research direction. After the talk, I would like to uh, ask for your comment and suggestion and also your cooperation. First, I would like to point out uh, there you are and here I am. There are uh, two and half an hour time different between us. But with the, uh, with the, the help of the network, it, it is no longer a problem. Okay? Uh, in the original design of the internet, there, there is not much security concern in mind. Uh, our ancestors believed that they are all good guys uh, over there on the internet, but uh, that reality is on the, quite the opposite. Okay? They are so different malicious attack, attempt to damage or disrupt our system. It could be malware, phishing, ransomware, and the DDoS attack. As we and this, which is the primary concern of today's discussion, okay. Of course, they will bring about um, negative effect to our organization, our, our our institution. Okay, the key is the vigilance and awareness. Among so many different type of malware, actually, the DDoS attack is a very challenging one. Okay, uh, DDoS stands for the distributed design of service. Uh, basically, they try to flood your system with a huge amount of traffic. So 
um, you, the system will no longer provide uh, ordinary service to the legitimate user. Okay, of course, um, such a will, such an attack will bring about some damage to the reputation of an organization, of a business, a company. Okay, in particular, DDoS attack can be launched from the botnet, uh, which is a network of compromised device. Here is a good illustration. Okay? This is the big guy. And there are 100,000 or even more compromised system. Uh, once infected, it appears nothing happened. But at the time, at the right time, this guy will issue command to all the compromise machine and launch a huge amount of traffic to the victim. Of course, uh, most of the system cannot stand such a such 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 a kind of uh, uh, attack. Be honest. Um, for other type of malware, if we take good care of our system, it will be fine. But you can see that for the DDoS attack, even we take very good care of system, we cannot we we we, we can steer. Uh, uh, immune from the, the attack of this sort. Okay, the DDoS attack, there are many ways, such as application layer, protocol layer, or volumetric attack, okay, or distribution retraction DDoS, and so forth. It is very, very difficult to prevent. All we can do is that Let's detect the happening of DDoS attack as soon as possible. And then we will have some mitigation uh, scheme, such as uh, the, the simplest way is drop those malicious traffic. Okay. okay, who will be the victim? I believe that everyone have the, the chance to be attacked unless your company have no value at all. Otherwise, sooner or later, sooner or later, will, you will be the possible victim. Okay? Okay, in the old day, how can we uh, deal with the DDoS detection? It can be signature based. It can be anonymous behavior based detection or the he heuristic uh, approach which combine combination of signature-based and anonymous-based detection technology. And also, it can be detected through quite involved traffic analysis. They work, but they are room for improvement. Okay, here I would like to show you some limitation of traditional DDoS detection technology. They over reliance on signature, okay, which can be easy, easily modified, evolved as the computer virus. We know that uh, the computer virus can even evolve by, by themselves uh, day and day by day. And they will be in ability to handle high traffic volume and in ability to detect new or previous unseen attack. And this is the primary concern of today's talk. And high force positive rate. And, and this will lead to some unnecessary mitigation mechanism and waste our system resource. Okay. As the rise of artificial intelligence and machine learning, we believe that there are very strong potential for artificial intelligence technology and machine learning uh, in the realm of DDoS detection, okay? As the DDoS become more complex, traditional method may fail to detect, okay? Uh, and machine learning and deep learning are emerged as a very promising solution 
for the detection and mitigation of DDoS attack. Okay, a machine learning can analyze large amount of data and identify pattern and anomaly in detective of the DDoS attack even further. The deep learning use neural network or similar structure to identify the traffic, the traffic pattern and automatically detect the future required for our identification and the pattern uh, from a huge amount of data. So uh, as based on this observation, our research will focus on the development of the detection of DDoS attack with machine learning, deep learning technology. And we even go further for the detect of un unseen uh, DDoS attack. Here is the here is, here is a brief introduction about the machine learning. Okay, uh, for regular machine learning, they are training phase. They must be labeled training data, and through the training process, we will have a good model with the well-known, well-trained model. Uh, given operational data, we can make correct prediction and say, oh, it is good or it is bad. It is a bad traffic. And what is the different difference between machine learning and deep learning? For machine learning in general, there is a process called future extraction. We need to extract the future and the future will be the input for our machine learning model. On the other hand, the deep learning, the process of future attraction become automatized. So we just give the system raw data. The, the system will attract require future and pattern by the system itself. This is the most fundamental difference. So we will have deep learning approach, our, our primary approach. Okay, here a long list of machine learning model and as well as a long list of deep learning model just for your information. And after the talk, I would like to present um, our faculty member this uh, slide and maybe it will be of referential uh, value to you. Okay, uh, for the for the data engineering, there is uh, we need to uh, figure out the traffic characteristic. So, uh, for machine learning, there is a, a steps say future attraction and future selection. They are commonly used approach. I would like to say again for deep learning. The future selection will be a built in part of the deep learning. So we need to make the choice for adequate um, the, the future for the for, for our detection purpose. Okay. Also for the detection of the traffic, detection of no traffic which is different from the detection of um, no traffic. For de detection of no traffic, there is already a huge study and have quite satisfactory accomplishment. The only exception is this one. Uh, I have no idea, okay? How, how comes Gongshan AEM uh, have such poor uh, performance for accuracy, but you can see that for other approach, they are already quite satisfactory accomplishment. And so we, we can say that for no traffic detection, uh, that's the mean the operational data fall into the distribution of the training data. We, we call this the no traffic 
no traffic. Okay, the detection can be it has been well studied, and there are already a uh, uh, satisfactory solution. Okay, the transit one is a no traffic. Imagine that there is a well trained system. How, however, the operational data is out of the distribution of the training data. Then the system will be have a blind guess. Okay. So this is the difference between open set and closed set recognition problem. This is much more challenging problem. Okay. Uh, it is also known as the out of distribution detection problem. Here is the Chinese Chinese saying saying that it is it means that knowing what you know and also knowing you what you don't know is true knowing. And this is will be our primary concern. Okay. If you need to take only one thing from this talk, this architecture will be that the same. Okay. Uh, we can divide the system into two parts. The above is for per set recognition. Okay, through the processing reprocessing through deep memory model, we have we shall have a classifier. So this module is for for the cross set recognition. And this part is for open set recognition. We demand some mechanism to tell us, well, this is um, no traffic or no traffic. More general, is this operational data fall into the distribution of our training data or it fall outside of the distribution of our training data? We need some mechanism. Okay, so this guy will tell us, will decide if an incoming operational data is a no or unknown. If it say it is no, we will follow the outcome of the curl set recognition and say it is benign or malicious. If this guy say that, well, this particular instance of incoming data is unknown. We never learned it before. This data will pass to a human traffic engineering and let this guy to label the, the stranger, the newcomer is uh, benign or malicious. With the labels on same data through the process of incremental learning, the model will be refined, will be enhanced next time the same operation data he will no longer a stranger to the system. Now he will have the confidence to say that, well, it is benign or malicious. Well, such an architecture is the, uh, the foundation of our, our study, our, our design. Of course, they are different approach for the deep learning. There are many different Different, there are so many different deep learning models. Also, there are many different approach for the recognition, the unknown detection. So we have a number of SCI paper trying out different combination. And here I would like to share with you some of our experience. For instance, we use Gaussian mixture model here for the unknown detection. And in this work, we use bi-directional LSTM as the classifier. Okay. So you can see that uh, although it is a little bit different, but such a design actually fit into this architecture, this framework. 
Okay, uh, there are some slides showing the detailed structure of the classifier. The detailed structure and concept of Gaussian mixture model and the concept of incremental learning an unknown and novice input instance will pass to the human engineering uh, engineer, traffic engineer, and that this guy to label it is good guy or bad guy. And after that, through the uh, incremental learning, the original model will become capable of dealing with the new traffic. And here are some typical measures in the machine learning, such as accuracy, precision, recall, and F1 score. Here we have no time to dig into their, um, uh, their, their, their definition uh, any further. But that you, let me show you, show with you the final outcome before our mechanism. You can see that the recall rate is so poor that with our system, with the, our system for uh, unknown detection and uh, with incremental learning. See, the performance index goes from uh, 0 0.4 to nearly 100%. It is quite, quite good uh, accomplishment. Okay. And here is another paper. Uh, the same, with the same framework, but you, we can see that in this work, the classifier is 1D DH uh, R date, and the out of unknown detection module is through the SSE and OCSVM approach, okay? And still, there is a traffic engineering to handle, to label unknown, Traffic so that through incremental learning, the model can be updated. So this is the second paper. And here is a capture for the 1D uh, DHR mate. In our framework, uh, in our architecture, in our design, it serves of the classifier. And uh, one has a support vector machine used to as a detector of unknown traffic. Okay, you can see that without the unknown detection in, in an incremental learning, uh, the performance accuracy is lower, but after that, it becomes high. Okay, before, after, before, after. So we, this is show us our design is in actually effective to the unknown detection problem. And this is the third work. And this work, CNN was used as the test file. And the uh, uh, reciprocal point learning is used as unknown detector module. There are still a human engineering a traffic engineer for the labeling of unknown system. So you can see that all these three design instances for all, all, they all fit into our framework, the most important framework. So I would like to say again, if you need to, you can only take one thing away from this talk. This uh, framework will be your choice. And here is the detail of CNN and the RPL. Okay, due to the, nine, uh, the time limitation, I just show, give you a very, very brief um, uh, introduction about, about recent work. And I have to say that we have already worked on this field um, for some day. And we actually have some, a number of SCI application on this. So, I would believe that our outcome, our work is, is recognized. And I would like to say thank you for your attention and your comment and suggestion are highly welcomed. Maybe 
uh, after the talk, I would like to present, uh, send this slide to our family member. And you have, do you, if you have any need, uh, just uh, feel free to have a discussion with me. Okay. Of course, to our faculty member, uh, any thought, any form of cooperation are also highly welcomed. Okay. And uh, that's all for today. And thank you for your time. Okay. I hope that we can, I can hear you quite soon. Thank you. And that should be all my, uh, the, all for, for today's presentation. Okay. Uh, Doctor, Doctor, are you there? Uh, Doctor, yes, yes, and that should uh, be all for my here. presentation. Okay. Yes, Doctor Lokesh. Yes, yes sir. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in between, uh, Professor, I have a one theory. Uh, Somewhere you mentioned that the DDO became became the more complex. I, I could not understand. What kind of complexity you are uh, talking about that? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, be honest, the connection uh, quality is not so good. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I am I'm quite able to hear you very clearly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, once again, I repeat the theory. Uh, somewhere you mentioned that the DDO is more complex. It's it's a uh, it's it's create the complexity. So what kind of complexity is? So I I, I could not get this point. Oh, you mean the system complexity? Yes, yes. Oh, well, I, I believe that it's not particularly complex because uh, uh, the deep learning um, has become a very popular tool. So I, I can say that roughly, uh, we did not have that because uh, for the dis discussion of complexity, we in general talk about the population size, uh, the problem size, but uh, for the in the field of AI, you can see that we shouldn't talk about the complexity issue. Okay, but uh, I, I just say that uh, the complexity of the system will be similar to the other AI application, deep learning application. And uh, here I have I have missed some point in in the in our framework. There is human data engineering. Now we want to remove this guy. And so the next step for our research is that uh, we want to uh, have some automatic leveling. And we want we want help them re remove that guy to let the entire system become much more automatic. Yes. Okay, that's our future direction. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Tin. Uh my pleasure. Yeah. So at, at, at last, I'm thankful to uh, Dr. Lokes, my director of research, for connecting such a wonderful professor for this uh, research conventions. So really, we learn a lot of things on the DDOS. So uh, on behalf of the director of research, I appreciate your uh, talks and uh, thank you so much, sir. The pleasure is mine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay, now I'm, uh, I'm so I, I'm supposed I, I can take my leave now. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I hope that I can, some other day I can see you gentlemen here in Taiwan. Okay. Mm -hmm. We look for your visit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.